Greetings to all of you. It's wonderful to see so many friendly faces. Tonight, for the first time, we have a number of very, very beautiful ladies coming for the first time. I hope we'll have more of them and occasionally some handsome men like myself. Um, we have uh, two Afghani friends of us who live here, uh, who will be here tonight. After you see the movie, uh, they can answer any question you may have about the country, about the policy. Uh, let me just mention to you that um, I have been in Afghanistan many times, and I did a three-month project in that country. The which? Could you speak up? Yes. I did a three-month project for HEW, uh -huh. and I was sent there by the U.S. government thinking that I knew all about Afghanistan because I spoke the language. They all speak Farsi or Dari, the same language as I do. And I thought I had known them because I had been there many before until I finished my project and I realized I knew very little about that culture. It was a lot more complex than I ever thought. Uh, the values are different. The tribal ethnicity are quite different. And when I thought they all <coughs> love Iranians because they speak Persian, they use our textbook, Iranian government then helped them with everything, I learned they are as suspicious of Iranian as the other countries. So I had to back up and do reorganize myself. So this, this when I saw this film, what they have done, a documentary of truth, of facts, I felt we need to show this to more people. Let the world, let our friends, let our community know more about, more of the truth about Afghanistan, what goes on there, what is happening in that community, why it has been so complex, and most importantly, how this little country of various tribes got rid of a war power like Soviet Union that no other power could deal with them. What you see here tonight will answer some of the questions because that is what they are. Not very easy to understand, but I hope you will appreciate. And once we are finished, uh, our friend from Afghanistan will be here, and we will answer any question you may have. With that, thank you, Paul. Go ahead. How's the volume in the back? Are the lights? Could be a little louder. A little louder, Paul. Could you ask me? Uh, this Tibor and Astara Tarfo. Tira Bigi, Dr. Kamdeman and Amotarban, we are pushed the man. Monsieur Zuki, I'm going to do that. I feel a smoke. I think it's explosion now. Good. How's that volume? Good. Good. We have to run. Be careful, okay? Be careful that they do not think that we are a terrorist. Little or nothing in the way of news comes out of Afghanistan. So the only way to find out what goes on there is to go in and see for yourself. Afghanistan is suddenly caught world attention. Standing alone between major powers, as it was a century ago. But the nations are more powerful today. There has been a major development in Afghanistan. But as Greg Dobbs reports from Kabul, it's a difficult country in which to be positive about what's going on. 
Ask the friendly Afghanistanis. They'll talk about what they know. But most are untrained in German. کامپوزیشن پانوراما ارتباط برای خود هر عکاس داره که نظر به دید خود نظر به استیتیک یا دید زیباییش یا هر اون معلومات را که میخواهی در داخل فرمش جاگوزین شده میتونه عکس بگیره عکس جز زندگی آدم ها است طالبا متاسفانه کرکاسی حرام کن داشتن میشد و اکس های که وقتی که در اکاس خانه ها هم گاه گاه طالبا میرفتن اکس های فرمیدی یا یادگاری یا از عروسی اگر میدید خواهر میکرد و اکاس جانانه در تو و بعض افکات هم بندی میسابده شدن که چون در اون دوران اکاس در افغانستان بودن و اینمی مشکلات مردم و این اکاس بتون و اینمی اکس ها جز تاریخ افغانستان باید باشد مملکتی که بدون اکس باشد مملکتی که بدون اکس های تاریخی، هنری، فرهنگی، ادبی باشد در حقیقت و مملکت مملکت بیگویت است مملکت گویت هیچ ندارد همچنان طالبا پایتخت افغانستان بچیده شد 
و حکومت انتقالی حامد کرزی روی کار شد در افغانستان در این دوره رشد اکاسی رو واقع کرد ما در یک دهه اخیر شایدش هستیم که یک انقلاب بسیار عظیم در راستای اکاسی افغانستان می دارد. و چیزهایی که مثلا ما فعلا هر روز از پیشش چشم بسته تیر میشیم مثلا ایره یک کار سال نیست و به این خود رکاسی میکنم عکس برداری میکنم بیشترین وقت ما دمی هر لحظه که پایم به فرصت میبینم وقتی که دی کمره ببرایم بیرون هر لحظه کمره هم رای ما کلچر فرهنگ ها، مثلا نابسامونی های، مثلا اجتماعی را چیزهایی را که خودم با پوست جان احساس کردیم، مثلا درک کردیم و دیدیم، لمس کردیم خوبی های مثلا جامعه ما به تصویر میکشم، زشتی هایش بخاطر از یک گروه، مثلا این امیدوار هستم، مثلا یک اکس ایره مطمئن هستم یک تحول هم یک تغییر به وجود میاره
عضوی از یک خانه یک نفرش مرداب است چیزی از که کار شده نمیتون یک چیز رو بکرد هست بسیار دلخراش که پنج جایزه جهانی را برد خب البته نمیخوام که به صلاح به جزئیات او روز برم چون همیشه دلخراش است و همیشه مرا ناراحت میسازه و نمیخوام که شنانده هم ناراحت شوند خب قسم که ما هم Imagine that you cover the really big and dangerous uh, stuff, but nobody knows. And then suddenly, with one picture, you become famous. Masoud Hussain, Evan Pulitzer Prize. Masoud Hussain. Masoud Hussain is an Afghan journalist in Kabul. Everybody in the world talk about you. Definitely, is a really good feeling. I'm covering mostly conflicts and war. Love to cover disaster. Sometimes it's crazy because it's war going on there. Everybody's running away. I'm running to that place. But that's something that I'm here for. That <laughs> thing that I'm created for. That. Thank you. 
the light was in the face of a person who was looking at me. The light was really good, you know? And then so I, I realized that Farzana is looking at me and stand there and is exactly in front of me and looking at me. So I just take a picture of that moment. And, uh, but I feel that, all right, so we, we had something between each other. I kind of like collect all my bravery and I said, okay, I talk to her and uh, I say that, okay, this is my feeling. She said, oh, I have the same feeling. از افغانستان اگر شروع کنیم از یکی از کسایی که خیلی از کارش خوشم میاد خب خانمم است که او او بخش را کور میکنه که من هیچ وقت نمیتونم خانم ها و خوشبختانه ایشان هم دو جایزه جهانی را آورده بر افغانستان حتی قبل از من که البته رقابت بسیار شدید بین ما بود و بعد بر حال چون من جایزه کلان بردم دگال کمک ازش پیش هستم یه نوع نفکر سنسیتوری هستی که بیشتر 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 We were the first group who got trained in photography by Aina after the Taliban time. Aina was like a training center for journalists. I consider more as a photographer because it can buy a soon chicken. I saw that more could be much more sure to make it than the angel of the beast. The story of the girl was making a shark story about a child. And that's another thing در آینده اکسای خوب داشته باشیم از طریق خود رشته فوتو جورنالیزم مصدر خدمت برای افغانستان و برای جهان باشیم One of the things that we always were talking about was like alright, everybody can be happy together girls doesn't have problem to have a job or not getting friendship is easy nobody talks about their religion and their tribes is it possible that Kabul or Afghanistan be like Aina. Farzana is more than all of us. Masood is a very good person. But Masood is a very good person. Farzana is a very good person. Thank you very much. 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 Thank you. Not only in my life, I think 
for a lot of women in Afghanistan. It changed the life of our generation. مردم باز در اونمون گذشته هایی که در بدر بودن مردم تعداد از آدم ها قدر خود است دستاد مادر خود است دستاد خوهر خود است دستاد برادر خود است دستاد شوهر خود است دستاد خانم خود است دستاد فرزندای خود است دستاد بنان خیلی حراس و ترس بایی داره که اونمون که یک خادثت دوباره فکرار نشد اما ما امیدوار هست عکس خودش لسان بین المللی است عکس چیز است که در حقیقت واقعیت های عینی جامعه را بیان می کند حال که جوانا و نوجوانا که علاقمند عکاسی هستند که ما آنچه را که یاد داریم چرا انتقال ندارد اینا حق داره مثل از این که ما خود با تفنگ از مایهن دفاع میکنیم فوتو جورنالیست ها از که با شکل زدن این این تفنگ فوتو جورنالیست ها کنده شان هست فوتو جورنالیزم روشن ساختن اون زوایه تاریک است که همه مردم با اون دستسی ندارد این تکنیک برای برجا ساختن آن سوژه است که عکاس در نظر دارد از بین چندین آدم یکی را انتخاب میکند و عکس میگیرد Yeah, 
به خاطر نجات امید خود ما پدر ما مثلا ما از نجده و مثلا کتلای نجده و تچیلی زمستان دیم دیگه جوه وجود نداشت ما کجا ما باز ما میرفت در اصل ما کنون خاطر خوشی نبرم از پاکستان سازه و مصاب شکست کنه وقتی ما پس آمانه به پنشه و زمین ها را پیشیده دلن در افتار از من در خانه ما را کنم واقعی پیشیده یعنی مردم دیده فضای ما را به این فکر میشه میشه که تبارو که به بیجه خانه ما از می زندگی ما از مثلا یک کسی مزایمان من را مانا میکنه و غزار است این آزادی مسئول از اربعه شده برای ما بگم خوطه خوش من نیست تعریب بکنی طالب بیجی یک طلبه اصلا با مانع تعریب تربیه مانع مثلا آزاری مانع مثلا رشد از این قبل چیز آزاده The Taliban meeting was the hardest time in my life. When I was very young, I was 13 years old. My mom had broken evident, and we were walking on the street, and I saw a white uh, crawler car stopped on the other side of the road, and a man came out of the car looking really angry at me and walking towards me. I told my mom, why that man is looking at me? And she said, oh, don't look at him, keep walking, walk faster. So I get closer to my mom and we keep walking and the man getting closer and closer to me. It was the point that I couldn't walk anymore and I stunned. And the guy got close and take out the big piece of wire and hit on my shoulders and told me, the potato which means cover your face. My mom told me to run, so I stopped running from him. I kind of uh, had to try to forget it, try to live with it, actually, not forget it. No, I will never forget it. I will never forget that moment. And like me, there was so many other women that were beaten in the street. All my memories from my childhood escaping a war and then the Taliban to be in front of all your neighbors, in front of everyone, almost everyone that you know, to be beaten for no reason by someone who has nothing to do with you. I was 13 years old, I was a child. And that affected my life so badly and even until now, everywhere I go, sometimes I get these nightmares because of it running away and trying to escape 
Oh my God, maybe I did something wrong because I'm women and escaping from something that I don't know exactly why. That I could change or anything because I'm a woman. و رفلکسیا این اکاس از جمله تکنیک های خیلی با ارزش در اکاسی می باشه که اکس در بیشتر قوت می تن یعنی کمره را که شما می گیرین وقتی که یک سحنه را نگاه می کنین دونمو سحنه پیش ازی که شطر بزنین شما باید فکر کنین توی دیپتافل در بکار بودین یا رول آفل پایده سیخت در بکار بکار بکارم لیدنگ لاین چی را در فرم خود بیارم؟ Hello? Hi, Anna, this is Masood from Kabul. <laughs> yeah, actually this is Masood, originally from Kabul, grew up in Iran, and then called you from Kabul again. <laughs> Listen, uh, there is a story about refugees, and uh, I've sent the pictures when I was young, my father, because he was working with government and communist regime, wanted to kill all those people. We had to leave Afghanistan. I grew up in Iran. I had a normal life. But most of the other refugees, they were so poor and I didn't know at all. When I went first time and saw it, I was really upset about it. When we were getting out of our country, it was for a big, you know, purpose. We were fighting against communists, and all the world was supporting us. Then nobody even remembered, and nobody even knew that the two and a half million people from that same story, now they are fighting only to have some food and stay alive in the winter. <coughs> Definitely, they were forgotten by the world. The world now is like one body, so all the members of this body should know that one member has a pain and they should feel this and they should know and they should find out. I worked in a tailor shop for nine months to buy a camera and then I start shooting photos from Afghan refugees' life trying to be voice for those people who cannot shout. This is a big possibility that the world forget Afghanistan again. These 10 years was a revolution for photography. But I don't know what will happen now. Journalism and this free situation for media is really new in Afghanistan. Government itself is against us sometimes. Taliban will come back somehow to the government or some part of the country. If Afghanistan lose this chance again, this time, I think that they will, this will be the last chance. خدا این خواسته اگر انتخابات درست برگزار نشه اگر باز مثلا جنگ رو در بگیره یک چیز تبیز خود جنواز مردباد نمی کنم از همین آزادی بیان Oh, my God. 
تصاویر سلویت و یا زد نور باید شما روی اونمو سوژه ایتان روی اونمو سوژه ایتان فکر کنید شما میتونید میبینید مثلا فرم را که از تر در حالت وقتی که پای میزنند در سایت احساس میکنید که لغت در سر دیگه از کرد میزنند برد از گیبتافل که آن قمیان همون قسم گفته ما شما در سنس آف مومنت و در سلویت و یا زد نور خود ما سنس آف مومنت و یا لحظه را در نظر بگیریم درست است و عکاس خیلی باید کنجکاو باشن خانه خود مبرایه و تا شام در جستجوی سوژه باشن
that uh, what and where you are, you know, and what you want to show. That's really important. This is the uh, complicate uh, kind of feeling that I had from the uh, Pulitzer Prize. It was not just, okay, I won the Pulitzer, and I got the uh, prize and then finished. No, I had to uh, <coughs> tell this story. December 2011, I was covering the Ashura event, which is a religious event every year. And the Najibullah was there. چون روز محرم روز آشورا روز تاریخی هست و اونمو روز روز شهادت نوازی پیغمبر اسلام بیدن. The mourners, I walk with them, I pass another color. Green clothes. It was completely different in that whole ceremony. I kind of walk past, I start video, suddenly a big explosion. I had to decide to stay or to uh, run away. something that was kind of trying to kill me, to stop me. And I had to do it, I had to go on. My eyes automatically went to the color which was familiar in my eyes. Trying to keep myself strong, I took that picture. easy, but I, I, I had to do it. That was my responsibility. و عکس مشخصا از یک مریض 
شرایط ما رو بله، 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 شرایط جامعه ما رو بله بله من تقریبا ده سال است که کار میکنم و اکثرا چی کار که کردیم با خانم ما بوده کامل میفهمم که چقدر حساس است بله. ما نمیخواییم که می یک دفعه مردم ها رو تحریک کنیم که یک شفا خانگه ایک داریم ایران باره ما با نمیزی که از زنا عکسی رفته میشون چیز ایران چم مکنم یا ما را چیزی بکنن بپاشن بزنن در مادرت ما را به حساب عکس کمی بپذیری در مجموع میشه ولی مشخص ما تو میتونیم کار کنیم اگر حتی همی بباشیم که حتی همی گیرم حتی همی کامره بودن باز کی میفهمد در رونی شد که یا چی رفت ما عکس رفتن دیگه ما مادرم های داریم تا دیگه 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 میرسته بله بله باز کامره بودن و عکس بودن بله بله امی اتفاقا میگه که شما دوباره خود داشته بودی یا خود کوشی کنی بگویی که ما مسئول امی گفتار ما است. امی خود امی امی دیگه چیش تا اون وقتی ما شما چیز میکنیم و آماده کنیم خب 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 دلیلش میگم برای چرا؟ دلیلش ایست که امین به مؤسسات و به میدیا و میدیا پاکی در مورد خصوصی گفت داریم این سبب پخش از این ایدیا هست به این تیوی و به این تیوی و به این جورنال و به این جورنال که گفت داریم این رادیو و رادیو این سبب از این شد که دیگر لایتا دفتر و خانما این جا پاکی گفت داریم خاموشی ما در مورد ازی که ایچ کسی را اجازه نمیتون که بگویه که پوز شدید و یک چی ما داریم؟ ایچ امکان نداره که یک اپدیت بگیریم که مثلا بخطر که چون اگر نیم باز با مو گزارش میمانیم ایچ دهی باره اصلا این فایل بسته کنیم پوز شدید که شد بسته کنیم برنات چیز ماست امی که کماندان چیز رو بگوید؟ مولا گفتیم؟ باز دولت چی؟ دولت دیگه دولت هست
شرایط خوده یعنی کامل کسی نمیتونه که هیچ خبر هیچ خبر استایی سینا خبر خواهی نمیاد بگی خبر نمیشتا بگیم مردم نه نمیشتا بگیم نمیشتا از می لازم کاملا قطع or not I think and I think it's not their their decision to make this that okay media should be allowed or not because maybe there will be some women who want their story to be told <laughs> نقاشی مبالغه صورت میگیرد اما در فوتو جورنالیزم که هست هیچ مبالغه در فوتو جورنالیزم هران چیز را که میگیری بیانگر یک واقعیت زنده ای هست که بدون هیچ دست نخورده برای بینیدش پیشکش میگیری در گذشته شناخت های که ما داشتم با کماندان ها چون من نقاش بودم مجاهدین کار خود فرمایش می دادن اما زمانه که ما برای فلم برداری می رفتم بازونا از ما حمایت می کردن و در ضمن جان ما در خطر نمی و ما را محافظت می کردن Thank you. 
picture that I took exactly as stand here. And it was through that, uh, it was through that gate. The explosion happened there, and then the picture of the green uh, girl is here. When I come here all the time, I get uh, emotional. Because I remember that day, and it's really difficult, you know. I really wanted to show the photos to those bombers. How would they feel about it? But I really wanted to ask, okay, this is the photo from that day, and just imagine if your children, your wives and your family is in here, what do you feel about it? Salam, Dana Jan. Stay here, Chip. Hope you're doing well. 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 Hope Yes, I just want to show you that photo. They lost their baby. A lot of children from all this compound. Is dead that day. And she's the little sister. She had like a medical problem when she was close to the explosion. Her stomach was like exploded, and the kidney and everything was out. Nobody thinks that she will be not alive. And uh, he didn't know where is he, where is she. And then I just uh, try with some friends to look for her, at least her body. And then we found her in emergency hospital. She was in really bad situation. She's really quiet and shy, so she cannot, she doesn't talk much. Just one time she called. She called me and talked to me. And she's too shy.
بشه و قلبش کرد و تحت سین و بینام تلو قدر و بعد تلو برای ما تحت سین و بینام همین پیا بچه اما بی من زر آتیش دارد آتیش با هم حالا دارد Sometimes you have something and you want to shout and you can't and there's no one to hear you and I don't want it that happen again that moment or that time that I couldn't have any voice I want to use photography in a way to not be voiceless again
وقتی که یک فوتو جورنالیست احساس نداشته باشد شاید اکساش بی تفاوت باشد وقتی که یک فوتو جورنالیست احساس داشته باشد از اون قدل سر یک سوژه بتانه کار کنه که دنیا هم آگاه شود
As the photographer said, they wanted to take pictures at any expense for the world to see about what they are doing, their life, and the people of Afghanistan. They are all very happy that you have been here and you watch what they did here. So we have three dear friends from Afghanistan here. One is Asad Akhlavi. Asad, come. Uh, I have invited them here, come on here, and bring your friend. They uh, are from Afghanistan. Uh, we have another Afghani here. Do we have the third one here? Rafi. Rafi? Yeah. Where are you, Rafi? <laughs> we are not going to kill you. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <laughs> Uh, I will uh, I will have them introduce themselves. You may uh, ask any question you want. I don't get kissed. <laughs> 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 okay. um, these are three gentlemen uh, are going to introduce themselves, tell you a little bit about themselves and uh, what they are doing in the bond. Yeah. Okay. And then you can have your brief question and I make sure that you get a proper answer so you have answer to your questions that you may have about the country. Asad, Asad yes. Akhbavi. Hi, my name is Asadullah Azraqi, people call me Asad. I am from Bamiyan. Louder. I'm from Bamiyan, Afghanistan. Bamiyan is the central Afghanistan. Um, and I am a Putney alum, graduated in 2011. I went to Champlain College to graduate, um, to get my bachelor's degree. And now I'm back at Putney School. I'm working at Putney School. Okay. So my friend Wazir. Yeah, so my name is Wazir Hashimi, and I came in the United States in 2013. A little loud. Yeah. <laughs> so, and I went to Rice Memorial High School in South Ellington for one year for junior, and then I transferred uh, to Long Trail School in Merced, uh, Vermont, and I graduate Long Trail School. And now I'm in Ennington College, and I go to the Bennington College, and I'm studying political science. And I'm also the the member, the youngest the community member at the United Nations and, and the headquarters in New York City. And, and where did you were born? I was born in Bamiyan, and I'm uh, we're from the same the town. Same town. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, okay, what they say, they say a picture speaks a thousand words. Mm. A film can trigger millions of emotions. Mm. That's what I have right now. So, my name is Muhammad Rafi Satif. Uh, I go by Rafi. It is just four letters, easy to remember. And 
Uh, I'm a Fulbright Scholar from Afghanistan in the United States, studying at SIT, and uh, I'm just graduating this May. And I'm lucky to have one of my teachers here. <laughs> Thank you, Elizabeth. <laughs> so, um, I'm from Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, and uh, I have lived uh, in Pakistan for a long time, like 18 years, being a refugee and then a student. And this movie, I have a, a specific, uh, you can say, I can relate them a lot with that, because Najibullah Musafar, the guy with the beard, he was my colleague as well at the Bakhtar University where I was teaching English, academic English. He was coming to the journalism department. So I met him and I once met the girl, even I forgot her name. So I have a lot of things with that. And the next thing I have with this movie is that my brother is a painter, was a painter actually. He left his job because uh, he lost his companion who was my cousin and his cousin too. So because of that, and he lost him in Wakil's village that's called Panchir. So I can relate to this movie a lot, and I'm here to just kind of give you more context. And thank, you, thank, you so thank you very much. Thank so, you very much. So please, those who have questions, make your question brief so everybody can have a chance mm. to answer that question. Yes, sir. Yes. With a terrorist attack on innocent people killing many, what is the motivation or the hope or the purpose the reason, what do they want to accomplish by that attack? First of all, um, let's see, you just uh, labeled this as terrorist. Well, this, ha this has, has been happening for many decades in Afghanistan, since uh, the Mongols came to Afghanistan. <laughs> they slaughtered millions and thousands of people in Afghanistan, and then the Russians came, and then the United States and all other world powers came to Afghanistan. So this, and also civil war, this has been going on, on for many decades. I wasn't born that time. Um, so for as long as Taliban, I can tell, uh, Taliban's motivation is that they don't like um, democracy the democracy that is uh, enforced by the foreigners in Afghanistan, they don't like that. They <coughs> like to live in a traditional, Afghanistan is more, more a traditional country, not more of a, we can say an Islamic country, but it's mostly traditionalist. We are more mostly traditionalist than Islamic. Okay. It's my opinion. Great. Okay. Razif, you want to add anything? I think the point of that, his question on that place uh, when exploded, it is, it was, uh, it was a ceremony which is a Muharram, it's the month of uh, the Ashura which all the peoples around the world celebrate, that the all Muslims people only know Afghanistan, they celebrate so that day. And why the Taliban came and exploded there, and why they killed all the peoples over there because it was more than I think I think eight thousand I don't I don't know exactly the number how many thousand people was there to on that uh, ceremony but the Taliban is to coming they killing everyone they kill you they kill you and they kill everyone the terrorists killing everyone they are they they are not Muslim those people they come they they if they are Muslim they they are not killing Muslim people. We are Muslim, and they coming and they're killing us. They're exploding us. They're exploding. They're exploding. They're putting bombs everywhere. They kill American. They kill Afghan. They kill everyone. And what? So just there are those kind of people. We cannot uh, relate any religions on those on those people. Maybe Rafi want to add something too. Um, obviously, why not? Um, your question is very good, but the thing is, you know, we are talking about the results. So if we go deep into the roots of these causes, you know, so you will not find anything like that. So I was born just a month before the Russian invasion in November 1979. So I was, you, I can just say like, I had just one month of life without any foreign invasion in the country. And I don't remember that, so <laughs> <laughs> obviously. So I grew up, and there's a lot of things going on in Afghanistan. Um, your religion was used uh, 
education system was used as a tool, as a medium to manipulate all these, uh, uh, you can say to manipulate people and to overcome people and to uh, kind of achieve those political aims. The, I will not say it is just the war in Afghanistan. Yes, the civil war was between the Afghans, but it has some foreign uh, implications that kind of it has been triggered in Afghanistan. So I will not say just like that because uh, speaking with responsibility is uh, what I always talk about. And uh, when we talk about the civil war of Afghanistan, especially these three and a half decades right now, starting from 79 till now, it's not just the Taliban. There's a long range of that. Taliban came into being in 1996. They were not part of the civil war. Why were they welcomed by the people? Because I'm from Kabul, we welcomed the Taliban just because of one thing. To, to us, at that moment, meant, peace meant only no war. And we didn't know about those other aspects of peace, that you should have education, you should have uh, like uh, access to good health, having your basic human needs met, and those things. So it was a time. And then the Taliban started to suppress the people. So we know there is a political, more political, economic, and social uh, uh, factors that are playing in these groups than being a religious thing. So I'm not going to speak for the Taliban or for anybody else. They can answer for themselves. OK, any other I'm question? Not, I'm, I'm going to add a little just for this. For myself, yeah. if any person commits to Christian or Muslim or Buddhism, whatever, if they are killing, they are not human. That's good. If they're Taliban, if they're whatever, they come, they kill people, they come, they explode, and they kill children, they kill women, they kill men, they kill everyone. And it doesn't matter if they put their names Taliban, or they're yeah. Daesh, or Mujahideen, or, 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 or whatever. whatever. Just they're, if I, I cannot understood. relate. Understood. Understood. Any other question? <laughs> um, yes. So uh, I'm taking the opportunity that both of you are from Could Bamiyan. You taking the opportunity that both of you are from Bamiyan and uh, trying to, uh, you know, go back to Afghanistan many centuries ago was not always an Islamic country, and has had many, uh, you know, different sort of cultural uh, context uh, with uh, the Greco, uh, you know, the Greek. Um, settlements and Buddhist and all of that. So I was just wondering what the relationship of the local people was to the heritage that was non-Islamic necessarily, um, and how, uh, what was the reaction with the Bamiyan Buddhas um, uh, being destroyed uh, as far as the, the heritage of the country itself? Okay. Yes. That's a good question. You want uh, to briefly mention it for everybody else? Yes, 2,000 years ago, Afghanistan wasn't, I don't know, uh, it wasn't, it was a Buddhist country. About 2,000 years ago, Afghanistan was a Buddhist country. I mean, Buddhist people would come and cross the Silk Road, and they would stay in Bamiyan, where the two tallest statues of Buddha are carved in, on the cliffs of uh, in the Kush. Mm. Uh, but the Taliban destroyed it in uh, March 2000, uh, 2001. Mm. Uh, at that time, they were, th they were thinking that people who were living in that uh, place were worshipping the, the Buddha, but that wasn't true. Um, and I, later, they, people realized that the, the, people, the people who destroyed the Buddha were not actual Afghan people, even though even though they were Taliban, they were not Afghan. They were dictated by other countries to destroy because that was our uh, uh, historical place. Uh, so what that's country? what happened. What countries? I can't name it right now. It's political. Yeah. <laughs> um, can I add something to that? Uh, yes, please. Yeah, um, I think it's, it should be, uh, we should uh, go in, uh, when we are talking about this thing. It's very important to know that Afghanistan became part of the Islamic empire around about 1400 years ago. Mm -hmm. 
and these Buddha sculptures, which were like 54 meters long, they were there, and none of the Islamic leaders or Muslim leaders kind of touched them because they had this uh, notions of uh, religious uh, uh, coexistence and tolerance in, in Afghanistan. And we, and we have been the host for a lot of things. Even during the Holocaust in the Europe, during the World War II, Afghanistan hosted a lot of Jewish people who came through the Silk Road in Afghanistan and they were there until Israel was built and created and then they went there. So we have been a, a very good example of religious coexistence in the history. So the Taliban is something, it is more of political thing than religious thing. And yes, I don't want to ignore and disregard the religious aspect of it, that yes, there is extremism. But we have extremism at both, at both ends. At one end, we have the extremism of the religious one. On the other hand, we have this secularist extremism that's kind of both are going against the uh, cultural values of the Af actual Afghans. So that's why you will always have um, this kind of controversies. Does he? Yeah, so as uh, her question, the, the good thing and the best thing in Afghanistan that we do not have problem our religions. There is Shia and Sunni and Buddhism and uh, Hinduism. Yeah, we have in Six. Afghanistan. Six. Yes, we do not have. We're all brothers and sisters. I can strongly say that. I have my best friends. My my brothers, uh, they are Pashtun and I'm Shia, and they are Tajik. We do not have any problems like Iraq, like other countries. This this problem to fighting and you're Shia and you're Sunni killing each other because of these things. We do not have. And before that, like now, there is like before that the Buddhism people came to Bami and all the time, all the the the, ter the terrorists are, uh, around the world they came. It's a historical place, and we proud that we have such a this historical place in Afghanistan, in our in our country. So before before the Taliban, it was it wasn't any like uh, any problems in. In Afghanistan, to about the Buddhism and other religious issues, any right? As he mentioned, that we have different. Uh, kind yeah, of we people. do have differences in religion, and uh, as he said, it's not war about religion. Well, we cannot really ignore that thing. There is war on uh, both religion and. Uh, and tribalism. But as Rafi mentioned le uh, earlier, that it's all, they took, the, uh, they took religion as a tool to, to use that tool to fight, uh, bring war uh, between uh, this religion and this tribalism. Mm. It's mostly about warlords and mm. tribes and all those things. It's, it's <coughs> rooted hundreds, hundreds of years ago. So it's, very old. Uh, let's see. Uh, yes, this lady. Is How were you able to leave Afghanistan if you come to America? Uh, did you hear the question? Yes. Could you repeat it so everybody can hear it? She asked me, "How did you leave um, Afghanistan to come to the United States?" I left Afga Afghanistan twice. Uh, first, I left around 1999 or 2000 when the Taliban uh, got control of the northern part. I left, I went to Pakistan with my family, and some of my relatives and my grandfather and my father was killed by the Taliban in Bamiyan. I left with my mother and some of my relatives. I went to Pakistan and Quetta, Balochistan. Uh, I stayed there for about four, uh, four years and weaving carpet, making carpet, Persian rugs. And after that, I came back to uh, Bamiyan. And then uh, I came to the United States in 2008 uh, through an exchange program called YAS, Youth Study, uh, Youth Exchange and Study Program. And it was a State Department uh, funded program that I came to. Thank you very much. Good night. Uh, do you want to know about all the other gentlemen, where they come from? And, uh, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, he was working for CIA. <laughs> 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 uh, 
So I left Afghanistan um, during the Civil War, 1992 to 1996, actually. Uh, so obviously when you're living in Afghanistan and you have uh, <coughs> Afghanistan is a tribal society as uh, uh, my colleague said here Asad Asad John okay we use John also in Persian so as Asad uh, uh, said Afghanistan is a tribal society and once one family member does something that goes against the interest of the other then the whole family would be the kind of the target and that is something that has been ha happening during this Civil War and before that, and during the Taliban, like I, I agree because minorities were badly, badly victimized during the Taliban era. But before that, um, so I left Afghanistan before the Taliban came. So what was there? The Civil War was very bad thing that happened because uh, the whole world after the Cold War ended in 18, uh, 1989, and then Russian left Afghanistan, and then. There was a communist government for a few more years, but they left. So the whole war kind of turned their backs on Afghanistan, and they left all these parties with these kind of weapons, heavy weapons, you know, weaponry and everything. And they left Afghanistan without any kind of support. The UN left, everybody left, so Afghanistan had the civil war. So I left Afghanistan during the civil war, and I returned to Afghanistan in 2001. But the reason I went to Afghanistan late, I returned late, was my education. I had already started my education in Pakistan, so I had to complete my master's there. And then in 2001, I went back. Okay. I, I did not uh, left anywhere in Afghanistan during my family did not. I'm, I was born in 1996. And so my, my first uh, travel abroad uh, country was the United States. So. I came as a private school, uh, and I uh, and I pay for my education. My family paid to my my brother is studying his master degree at Rutgers University. And he will graduate uh, next year, and so I'm studying uh, Ennington College in Vermont. And so I came for a private school, and. Yeah, I think I forgot. I came to U.S. also through Department of State Scholarship called Fulbright. So I'm here on a scholarship. Yeah. Okay, ma'am. Yes. I have a question. So since you left, do you get a chance to go back to your communities? Can you hear me okay? Yes. Do you get a chance to go back to your communities? And when you do go back, what are some of the changes that you see? And what are the changes that you wish you would see? Okay. This is a very nice question. I have to answer that. So. I would love to love to go back to Afghanistan when, when I finished my education. I went to back last year during my break. I went to back last year to Afghanistan and I had a, a, a meeting with all the students that uh, I came from that school and encouraged them to study and they were very... I hope this video, this movie, go and capture some other schools like and this we are now in located in a in very nice situation in Afghanistan. All the girls, most of them, just a little areas, the girls do not go to school. In Afghanistan, now girls go to university, go to schools, they can go to shopping, every, like men, like me. And they have more opportunities. I wish they bring up here because everything, the media and other things, just, just do so these things. I wish they, they can bring, uh, uh, for now, what what they're going what's going on in Afghanistan it's it's a lot changes and Afghanistan needs to be to be changed and I encourage every people so leave in the United States and our their country when they finish their study just go just go back and build your country if I do not build my country if he do not build country who will come and who will build it it's our responsibility to go back to to bring change to our to Afghanistan and for how long we should stand this situation to all the countries come to interfere to our country and destroy our country. By myself, myself, if I finish my school to today and I will buy a ticket tonight and go back home. <laughs> and I encourage everyone to go back to know their responsibilities, 
to bring change for the next generation to build the next generation that they can live. Good, good, perfect. Let's see what Asad has to say. <laughs> okay. As to your question, I just want to be quick. Um, I go to Afghanistan. I used to go to Afghanistan every other two years. Uh, I would take a break in the summer and go home to visit my family because I miss my family a lot. And uh, obviously. Uh, but right now, I am in a situation where uh, I can go to Afghanistan, but I would not be able to come back. Last time when I went to Afghanistan, applying for a visa took me about three months, and I was almost couldn't make it to come back to study. So I decided to apply for asylum, and I, I have uh, an asylum case pending, and hopefully I'll get my green card. Once I get my green card, I, I can go home and I will bring my family here. Mm -hmm. Kathy, please. Uh, well, uh, Mahatma Gandhi said, be the change you want to see in others. I think uh, that goes with me. And uh, we need a lot of change in Afghanistan. But uh, uh, I would insist on culturally appropriate change that can be acceptable to the people of Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. The first king of Afghanistan, um, I would say that, yeah, he was the king. Uh, the, who got our independence from the British, Amal Lafan, he tried once, you know, he, uh, he tried to moderate the whole community and the society of Afghanistan, but uh, everything backfired on him. Mm. So I think culturally appropriate change is something we do need. And uh, two things that I always insist. Um, first, we need, because Afghanistan has more than 60% of youth at this point, a point. I'm, uh, when I, I'm talking about youth, I'm talking about age 15 to 25. Mm -hmm. So we have to engage the youth. Yes. And the second part, more than half, uh, you can say, yeah, it's still more than like 53% of the Afghan population is women. So we need to give them equal participation. And that is the biggest problem. We do have a little bit of participation, but it depends where you're talking about. Mm -hmm. If you're talking about big cities, Obviously, you will find opportunities for women, but if you're talking about the rural areas, wherever you talk about south, north, east, west of Afghanistan, wherever, it's difficult for the women. And mm -hmm. there are a lot of deep, uh, like structurally and culturally deep uh, causes that are kind of uh, giving rise to these problems that we are facing today. Mm -hmm. So it is difficult, somebody sitting here in Brattleboro thinking about democracy and living in the democracy and think about Afghanistan, okay, we want this democracy in Afghanistan, it will not work. So culturally appropriate thing that can be acceptable to the Afghans. So we want change and we want change something that is positive mm -hmm. for the Afghans, that's not going to backfire and at anybody. So we do want change, but we want change that goes with the Afghan values and with the Afghan tradition. I want to add something. Yes. So the only way we can bring changes in Afghanistan is two things. First, security. That's the first thing. Mm. You have to have security in order to live in your house and, be, and eat food and sleep uh, well. The second most important is education. Mm. That's the only key to bring changes in Afghanistan. Because a lot of people are illiterate, they cannot read and write. Mm -hmm. Women, if they don't know their, they don't know they can, they don't know how to write their names. How can they ch teach their children when they come back to s from school? They cannot be helpful. Yeah, but Afghanistan needs these youth people, educated people, to bring education and security to Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. If these education people is studying in the United States or London on the highest level of education. If I do not go back, if he do not go back, their, the power education they have, who will bring those change? Mm -hmm. And those people there, as, as John said that, they do not have this opportunity. We should bring, provide this opportunity, those people to go to school and to, to bring peace for them, mm -hmm. for, for education. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see. Let me see what other questions you have, and then we let, we will start here. What is your question? Your question, please. Um, you put your two hands here. <laughs> no, no. Okay, and you are next. Okay. Uh, I had the privilege of being in Afghanistan for two years recently, and made many good Afghan friends. I was on a PRT with Afghan um, My brother was a translator over there. And, um, 
And of course, you, as you know, many of them have applied for asylum in the United States and many of them have gotten permanent visas. And while I'm very happy for all of them that have gotten that, not just to the U.S., but I was on a PRT uh, with a provincial reconstruction team. It's where Americans and other yes, allied yes. forces were in a, a protected zone and they were scattered throughout the country. Um, and I was on one in Mozar Sharif and one in Logar province. Yeah. And, and so, in Bamiyan too, it was in our and, state. And the New Zealanders were in Bamiyan. And I'm sure there are many Afghans in New Zealand now, yes. thanks yeah. to the Bamiyan PRT. Your question, your question. So my question is <laughs> that um, you have uh, been lucky enough to come to the United States. Some of you are in asylum, some of you are not. I'm wondering, um, I see many best and brightest young Afghans coming to the United States and elsewhere. Do you feel that that is uh, a good thing or a bad thing in terms of having uh, to promote Afghan into the future? Uh, okay, just a second. This is one question. Let me your question. My question is, what are the... Um, we'll answer that. The um, biggest misconceptions that Americans have about your country? That's one of my questions. And the second one is, what has it been like for you here, and, and um, what have been the surprises about the American culture, or us? You answer this one. I answer that one here. <laughs> Just a second. For the next question. Yes, Dan. How free or controlled is the press in Afghanistan right now? It is better to just quick answers. Oh, okay. But if, if his uh, meaning of his name is minister. <laughs> All right, Mr. Minister, take it easy. I, we have short time, and I want to answer as many questions as possible. So quickly answer this gentleman. So, not a good memory. <laughs> I thought from you will come to Yeah. Can you repeat your question? <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and as he said, like I think those youth people and they have the education and the young people energy work with them and I think they shouldn't leave their country. For now, Afghanistan needs to you those young people, educated people, to come to the government and work with them and bring change. If I think by myself, okay, I'm not going back to Afghanistan, I have car here, I have house here, I have job here, and it's only I think by myself. And those people, they're thinking about their family only and their self, how to improve their life. And they don't think about millions of people they do not have opportunities to go to school. They do not have a good, great economy. They do not have a very a good life there. But as I, I think, they shouldn't leave Afghanistan. As also they are coming now if they come. So I think they should go back and, uh, and work with their people. I somewhat agree, but not mostly. <laughs> <laughs> the reason that I don't agree with him John is because why am I here? Why are we here? Why you're not that you you can from school here. Those people they only they have their education. Uh, it's very great things that you came here and you're studying here. You get you graduate high school and you graduate college. Okay, and um, I, I will intervene here. <laughs> <laughs> you know. So uh, here's the thing. Um, I think everything is kind of very interrelated and we cannot just talk about one issue without talking or taking into consideration the other parts. Why do these Afghans are leaving? So I, I went and visited uh, my family in Kabul just in January, and uh, I was surprised. I was working with the British Council, and uh, by the time I was there, we had this project approved till 2020. And when I went and visited my office, this March, end of this month, they are finishing their project. They downsized and they are closing down. Mm -hmm. So there are a lot of things going on there. Everything is related. 200,000 youths between age 17 to 30, they have left Afghanistan in the last 20 months. Mm -hmm. 
So it is not, it is not, yeah, it is good. I have that patriotic feeling. I have that nationalistic emotions. I do have them, but uh, I cannot live by them because I need that environment that can nourish that. So there are problems. I'm going back home. I want to make it sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm going back home. But there are opportunities that we have to create. But there are youth. The problem is in Afghanistan, especially in the international community, they were there, but uh, as, as I, uh, I used the word before, culturally appropriate change and culturally appropriate intervention was needed that was ignored by the international community. And instead of bringing the youth to the, and like kind of, you can say, bringing the youth to the leadership positions, they supported those warlords who were responsible for the whole chaos in Afghanistan. So now those warlords have still the power and they can trigger any part of the country. So that's the thing. I think we have to be honest with everything. I want to go back, but I want the opportunities that can, that can avail my skills for that so that I can build on that and develop. Yeah, but we, all the power is now in Afghanistan, they are Mujahideen because we are seeing this problem, these Mujahideens, yesterday they killed each other, now they're in ministers, they're commanders, yesterday they killed other people, and other people, they killed their brothers and their relatives, now they are come back together. We need to stop them. We need to stop them, these young peoples need, only this young generation can stop them. And they are not educated, they are ministers right now, they are not graduated from 12th grade. And they don't know what to do. Oh, that, that says that says it all. I'm just being frank and honest. I'm also embarrassed of my government. Mm. Very much. And mm. because they don't value the education. Mm. If you're educated in Afghanistan, you're just like a person uh, who doesn't know how to read and write. It's the same thing. So if they cannot provide provide. Um, work or opportunities for these educated people. They have no values, they have no place to go, they cannot earn anything. So they don't have any place to stay. That's why they leave the country. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I would also avoid over generalization of things. Mm -hmm. uh, it is more individual things that the people who make decisions to stay here or stay in Afghanistan, where they were, it all depends with their circumstances. Mm -hmm. So it is totally different for each individual. And let's be honest for that. Obviously, we, there's a lot of room for Afghanistan. We have just recently been uh, out of a regime, a very oppressive regime called Taliban. And since 2001, we have been handed over again to the previous warlords because of, because of, because of them we had to welcome Taliban to finish the civil war. Mm -hmm. And then they are back. So we want that change to come at the leadership uh, mm -hmm. part. You know? So that's what we are looking for. The picture that the journalist showed to that if you remember the, the magazine, the Kabul University, yeah. women with no, with no hands, just uh, that. It was before the Taliban and Mujahideen. Mm. Yeah. Since we have Mujahideen and <laughs> Taliban, this is everything is changed and damaged and, and destroyed. I just wanted to add something because I had an observation with that picture when they showed and they said 1970s before Taliban. When Taliban came into being in 1996, how can you say before? Actually, when you talk about like journalism, we should have that responsibility of giving what we're giving out there. Mm -hmm. Because uh, I, I know the context, so I can, I can understand, okay, this actually belongs to this time. I know it is before my birth and there was even, you can even call it before the communist regime. Yes. You can call it before Mujahideen. So let's not um, a kind of target one group. Let's talk in, 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 in a holistic way because everybody had their responsibility from, from the kings that was the king of Afghanistan for 40 years. Afghanistan was peaceful but no development, no education. And then we had these uh, communist regimes who came into Afghanistan. They had their responsibilities. and. And I, I think we should go into deep into those things that talks about the social justice in Afghanistan. Social justice has not been addressed in the last 16 years by the international community. And when, when I talk about that, I'm talking about the human basic needs are still there. There's a big difference of class. There's just five or six percent of people who are taking all the international aid into their pockets, and the people are still there poor. So 
there's you will not see difference in the actual people so when you start seeing the difference in the, the in the daily life of the common people then you can talk about the development i don't want these tall buildings i want my people to be happy and for us happiness is no war just have our basic human needs met and we have already lived in afghanistan for thousands of years together we can live together. We don't want international intervention. We do want friends, but friends with honesty. <laughs> Let us have one more question before we leave. A question about the press you didn't answer? No, the press. How was the press? How was the press? The press. Was the press. Uh, what was the question of the press? Mm -hmm. the 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 freedom of expression was yeah. it something? Yeah. Your question. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. What I wanted to know what you think, what it's been like to be here. Like, how have your perceptions of the United States been different? Thank you. Okay, we answer that. Well, what surprised you? Yes. I'm being honest, so. Please do. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, this policy. Yeah. Before I came to the United States, there was there was a lot of. Uh, misconception and stereotype about Americans and about so many United States and other people. But when I came here, um, everything was fine. And I didn't see all those things that people were talking about. Um, I see normal people like me. And, uh, it wasn't totally difficult for me to adjust so, I don't want to go in much detail, but <laughs> overall, yeah, it's been good. Um, Rafi? I can add to that. Uh, well, I, I think it, it, most of the time it is the first, uh, what they call it, the first impression, you know? Mm -hmm. So, it depends on the first exposure you have to people. Um, and, uh, unfortunately, in most of the world we see that there is a big difference between the actual the government and the actual people like most of the governments are not representative of their people or their culture they have the policies to go behind so our exposure in afghanistan obviously we met the americans who had badges and those things you know guns so obviously there are things but after i came to the u.s i had before that i had experience having kind of work with americans civilians so they're, they're not, this kind of stereotypes are mutual. Hmm. Mutual, totally. What the media is giving out about Afghanistan in this country, I would say it is more than 90% wrong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that's true. Because they're just showing the violent pictures of Afghanistan. And obviously, I, uh, uh, this professor uh, from Stanford University, Professor Albert, uh, uh, I forgot his name. So Albert something, I have, with all the respect to him. So he said that the, the actual violence in the society is 10%, but on the media it is 77%. Mm -hmm. They are kind of exaggerating things, obviously. Mm -hmm. There is problem in Afghanistan, but it's not to that extent. Mm -hmm. So why not, if you promote that positivity, that positive thinking, it will definitely help mm -hmm. not only Afghans, but also the US people. The US people, you are all the taxpayers, and your tax money is being used there, and you don't have any say in that, how mm -hmm. the, 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 the defense policies are made, mm -hmm. and how the budgets are passed, you know, and you see United States with 700 or 600 billion, I don't know, million or billion dollars, mm -hmm. it's on the top of the world. Mm -hmm. So it's your money. So you should have a say in that, and that is democracy that I would say. Like these are like we change, we want change here, we want change in Afghanistan, and today it's the globalization world. So we are living. <coughs> what decision is made in DC, we will suffer in Afghanistan. What terrorist is hosted in Afghanistan, you will suffer in New York. So we should know those facts about globalization, and we should pay attention on a mutual friendship, mutual honesty. And I would even say, like, we should vanish these uh, power struggles that has been in the past. Your lower, your third world, we are first world. Nothing makes us like that. Go to the history. Afghanistan also had a time that they were on the top of the world, but it's the history. Uh, good. Thank you. I want to mention that. that uh, yeah, important. I would. You would get that. Uh, <laughs> the, 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 the point is right. Uh, U.S. press not only has represented Afghanistan, 
but they have represented Iran and situation in yes. many other countries. Yes. Yes. For your information, yes. the reason we have Windham World Affairs, hmm? the reason we are here, yeah. the reason the group gets together <coughs> is to bring people like yourself, movies that we have, other scholars who tell us the truth, share the truth about the world, yeah. that overcome the garbage we did in the press. Yeah. 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 I think that question yeah. is still unaddressed. Let's see Bajir yeah. makes his point. Yeah. Yeah. So as you ask the question, as I ask you this question, if you go back there, how do you feel about the people? And when I, my family is working with United Nations, all Americans and people and we cannot judge peoples by the government it's completely different government is different and peoples are the politics it's the different ones like as I came here first time see how the people is nice like that very I live with a host family I had a host mom so exactly the same my mom when I go back I explain to all these people no, don't think like that. The people are not, people of America is not like that. Your people is like this. And also for now, people, some people in America think that if, if you say I'm a Muslim, they will see it like this in, in a different. But no, that's not right. We mm -hmm. cannot judge people for, uh, for a religion or for, mm -hmm. a, for, the, for political things. But we're all... We are all brothers and we are all sisters. Yeah, we can all work. Yeah, all work. Thank, thank you, thank you, Vadim. Was there any question here that we did not answer yet? <laughs> okay. Oh, did you, you answer? Freedom of speech. It was about the. Um, I had a media. question about the freedom of the press or the control of the press uh, currently. I lost my uncle, um, who was the chief editor of Hakikat uh, al during the communist region. That was called the. Uh, what like the reality of uh, uh, Saur, it's, it's the second month of Afghanistan, Saur, uh, the, the reality of Saur revolution. That was the communist revolution. So he was the chief executive of that um, newspaper in Afghanistan, but he was assassinated during the civil war in his office. Mm -hmm. So we have strong things there. Obviously, if we, if we go in deep into the, the history, our first king, like who, got as the independence. The first constitution he created in 1922. In that constitution, it's very important in a, in a very traditional Afghan community, thousands of years of tribal and, and multi-ethnic background and living, he came with two things. Freedom of expression was part of it and equal rights. These are the two main articles of that constitution. And and we are talking about 1922, mm -hmm. that the world was kind of just taking back, they were kind of revitalizing from the World War I. So we had those things. And during the king, obviously during the communist mm -hmm. regime, but the best history of journalism in terms of freedom of expression and freedom of speech is, uh, it starts with 2000, <coughs> 2001. But at the same time, um, I would also say like this code of conduct and this uh, the violation of private space and public space has also been exaggerated these, the, during this period because you have seen, there's a, I, I'm just talking about responsibility. So it is not, freedom of speech doesn't mean whatever you want to say. You, it's not about that. So freedom of speech actually means you can express yourself. It doesn't mean that you should abuse others. So we should have those codes of conduct also into journalism in Afghanistan. And unfortunately, even the freedom of exp the, the media that we have in Afghanistan, they are also kind of, because it is the Afghan media, and it is also, obviously, you will see the structure and culture of Afghans coming up into that. Even the media, the, especially the private channels, television channels, they are kind of, one belongs to one warlord, the other belongs to other warlord, so they are promoting themselves. So you can see those things as well there. So I think there is, we need a combination of both, a little bit of responsibility, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, so. In a nutshell, uh, we had 
the best uh, freedom of uh, press since 2001. Basically, in the Karzai, Karzai's government, and after that, right now, it's not going well. Mm -hmm. Karzai is very good. How contemporary was this film? Like, how long ago was this made? What we saw tonight? 14. 14. 14. 14? Yeah. Oh, okay. So, but that uh, the explosion, it was in, I think it was in 2007. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was, it, it was, most of this part of the movie is not 2014. Mm -hmm. It is before the two, because if we compare 2007 until now, it's 60 person, it's completely different as, like, mm -hmm. in 2001, up to now, if you go to Kabul, Kabul is like, very beautiful, it's more buildings, like construction, everything, it's, it's so completely, completely different. Those pictures that, that she showed, and he showed that, it was before, it was like 2005 and three and mm -hmm. okay. something like that. Yeah, it's changing like it so fast, as, uh, mm -hmm. in terms of infrastructure. Infrastructure, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's why we say that uh, US media is mostly filtered and showing all the bad things, which mm -hmm. contradicts with what the taxpayers are saying, or paying mm -hmm. to go there to make, um, to build the country, not to destroy the country. But what, we, what the reality, yes, the country has um, developed so much. Like mm -hmm. When I went there in 2013, I couldn't realize where I am. What is this place? Yes, it has been so, built, education, everything is provided. So mm -hmm. The only hope we have right now is that around about 60% of 8 million children who are studying in schools are girls. Mm -hmm. So that's the best news that we have. Mm -hmm. If we have more women participation, because women are the first who will mm -hmm. educate our children. Mm -hmm. so I think we need this shift of attention from male domination to the female, but at mm -hmm. the same time with respect to the rights of both. Mm -hmm. So I hope for that and the only way out I can see as an educator is education. Thank you very much. I hope I was right to bring this movie and show it to you. And I hope you enjoyed the discussion we had Well, she's a good friend of mine. Oh, okay. But she...